Well, you're in Dallas right now, which yeah. is the home of, of uh, Charleston White. Yeah, we, we was talking about that. A times. <laughs> <laughs> we was talking about that, man. I don't have no, I don't have no comment for Charleston, bro. Like, I don't want to say nothing about that, man. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't, bro, because he don't got no, he don't have no, what you call it, uh, he don't got no filter, but then he don't have no, um, it's a word I'm looking for, like, he don't have no discipline with how far he'll go with certain things. So I just don't, I don't care to talk about dude, you know? Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, because we'll I'm too to old time. to be in a, in a, in an internet match with this guy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got time for that. I don't. Yeah, because he'll call the cops on you. <laughs> <laughs> start See? To get heated. <laughs> See what I'm saying? He'll make up some shit, you know? I'm cool. <laughs> I feel you. I Much feel love, you. Charles. I ain't got no problem with you, bro. Do your shit. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, since our last interview, Eric Holder was found guilty yeah. of first-degree murder as well as two counts of attempted voluntary manslaughter. Damn. Um, well, were you at all surprised at the conviction? Not at all, bro. Like, nah, bro. Like, that's, 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 you know, that's, that's a prime example of a, of a lot of people that, you know, did murder and there was a camera somewhere that was recording them and shit and they didn't know. So I'm not surprised at all now. Yeah, because there was, I feel like a bit of tension, especially in LA mm -hmm. leading up to that trial because you never know with cases like this because we, we looked through the case. I remember I had you know, this one lawyer, Mo Ganga, come in mm -hmm. and he sort of broke down the case. And luckily, Eric Holder had a public defendant. Mm -hmm. So you know a lot of work didn't go into his defense. There wasn't like, he didn't have a dream team putting together this whole story about why it happened and why and so forth because there is somewhat of a story. He was... He had serious mental issues. In fact, he was uh, getting shock therapy, I think, in the couple of weeks leading up to the incident. Shock therapy for, ment for his mental health? Exactly. Oh, wow. Exactly. And he was, I think, not taking his medications and so forth. Because remember, after he got caught, he checked himself into a mental facility. He yeah. Checked himself in, right? <laughs> Do you know why I think he did that, Vlad? Because of a law had came out. A law had came out right before that, um, where it was, it was like all on social media and everything that... If you can, like, if you had committed a murder or something like that, but if you can prove that your mental health wasn't that good, that you wouldn't get charged with a crime, some shit like that. I don't know what it's called. You could probably look it up, but I believe, like, he knew, you know, and he tried well, to yeah, play on and that. That was going to be the defense that, like, listen, I was going through a mental breakdown and I didn't know what was happening and, and I, I got triggered and shot these guys, but I, I don't even know what happened. See, my thing is, right. the, my thing is, you could say that shit, but look how how smooth he did everything. If you look at the tape, like you know, what I'm saying, you ran away. Usually, mental people don't run away. Like people that's crazy, they they'll do some shit and just be standing there and just to the police come and they get tackled. You ran away. You threw the gun in the car. Like you did all type of smart, intelligent ass shit, ex except look for the cameras. You know what I'm saying? Right. So now, <laughs> so now you want to say you was crazy? Like, come on, bro. You know, he deserved what he he deserved what he got, man. I I, I believe he should have. You know, I, I'm gonna leave it alone, man. You know, and and you know the thing about that too, Vlad. Like when we first spoke about it, I was speaking out of emotion. You know what I mean? Because Nipsey was my homeboy. Like it, that was a dude that I had a lot of love for. I had real conversations with that guy. You know, like things that he told me that I always think about. And it was just things that me and him know. You know what I'm saying? That's how Nipsey was. He was personal. He was personable with individual people. You know what I'm saying? That he fucked with. And um, I was speaking out of emotion. Like, I shouldn't have never even spoke on that because that's their business. You know what I'm saying? But because I was so emotionally, like, affected by it, I kind of spoke on it. But it really wasn't my business to even speak on it, to be real well, with you. One of the things that uh, Lunell said when I spoke to her yeah. was that, she felt, you know, and she lives in in that Crenshaw. Yeah, area. she live across the street, I believe, or, or one in a, a street behind it or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. She felt that if it was like a non guilty plea or like a, a lesser manslaughter or whatever, yeah. she felt that there would be another riot in L.A. like the the, the ninety one riots. I don't know As about a riot, there, but it would have been some. It would have been some shit. Yeah, I don't know about a riot. Because you got to think it's it's kind of old, 
but you know it still affect his immediate circle you know what i'm saying and his family so i believe it would have been something something behind it but a riot is kind of to me a little far-fetched i believe it could have happened though who knows i don't know <laughs>